Up in the sky in a dogman's box, you are in a world of steel. Thousands of tons of it to form the skeleton of a modern building. Structural steel, in a great variety of shapes and sizes, is an everyday ingredient in our way of life. But the steel that goes into the building of any structure must be fabricated, stored, and handled. Men go to steel yards every day to perform a variety of jobs. There's danger in some of them. Danger does not lie only in the workshops where steel is fabricated. Outside the shops, there are yards where accidents can happen and unfortunately do. Most such accidents are stories without words. The sequence of events is plain. Human carelessness is at the root of most of them. Someone has neglected to take ordinary precautions. It may be a crane driver, a crane chaser, or just a man who failed to look where he was going. When an accident happens, the best comes out in men through their eagerness to help an injured mate. Though there are some to whom it is especially distressing. The time often lengthy between the occurrence of an accident and the arrival of an injured man at hospital can be critical. Much less time is required to see that obvious safety precautions are observed. Keep to the rules and accidents are much less likely to happen. In a storage yard like this, steel sections and plates are stored before they are fabricated for various structures. Such a storage yard must be well organized if efficiency is to be maintained and accidents avoided. Here, for example, is excellent storage. The light section rack is used only for storing small sections which can be lifted readily by hand without the aid of a crane. The rack is ruggedly constructed because it has to carry a very heavy load when all compartments are full. Each compartment is clearly marked for the stock size. The stock is neatly stacked with the ends level. A color marking helps to identify sections. But keep the ground in front of the rack clear. Litter like this could cause a nasty fall. Now this looks simple enough. There's nothing very difficult about removing some light section steel. And yet there is a risk of accident here. This man is handling the steel with his bare hands, and those sandals make him number one candidate for a broken toe. But leather gloves and safety boots with steel capping in the toes reduce the hazard in this job. The heavy section area is where bad storage or handling could have disastrous results. Roll steel joists must be stored safely in this manner on good foundation. The stack must be made on a firm base, which should be slightly sloped to allow drainage at the base and thus prevent collapse of the stored material. An alternative method of stacking beams is on the flanges. This method will reduce the rate of corrosion because moisture is quickly drained away. Steel or hardwood packers of uniform thickness are placed between rows and the spaces left between beams to allow a sling to be attached or withdrawn without dislodging the remainder of the stack. But they should not protrude like these three. This one is correct and level with beam edge. A very high stack of materials will be unstable and likely to collapse. Generally speaking, the height of the stack should not be greater than the width at the base. It is more important that the top members of the stack are securely placed and not likely to fall over. Steel channels are stacked in this way for maximum safety and ease of handling. Heavy steel angles present little hazard if stacked in this manner. Extra time taken in stacking will be saved when picking up. The best and safest method of stacking lighter angles is to have them interlock with each other in this manner thus achieving rigidity in the stack. The scaffolding and lifts act of New South Wales prescribes that any person slinging and directing the movements of loads handled by any crane is required to hold a certificate of competency as a crane chaser. 
Alternatively, he must have a permit to learn issued by the Department of Labor and Industry. While he is learning, he must be under the guidance of a certificate at train chaser or other competent person. This is a requirement in the interest of safety. The size of sling is selected from a load chart, which should be located conveniently. Sling angle influences the safe load and is also shown on the chart. Always stand clear before a lift is taken. Never place hands on the sling. Sudden sling tightening or movement of loads may cause serious injury. A tail rope can be used to advantage where load guiding is necessary. If it is necessary to guide by hand, always do so with the utmost care. Clear, correct signals such as these will reduce accident risks. The careless use of packing can be dangerous too. To throw it down in front of the rack is an invitation for someone who doesn't notice it to trip and perhaps suffer a nasty injury. Stack it up into a tidy heap out of the way of passing workmates. This doesn't mean much effort and it's well worth doing. Steel plates may be stored on edge in properly designed racks. This method has some advantage in confined spaces, but it can involve unexpected dangers. You might be waiting for a crane to turn up. You're out of the wind in here, that's just the trouble. The movement of the plate in the wind is a prelude to its blowing a crop. And a crushed chest is the reward of carelessness. The most used for edge lifting of steel plate. The essential features of a well-designed clamp of this type are a robust frame with maximum strength at curved section. The grab jaw opening is just sufficient to admit the thickest plate to be handled. It will be found more economical to have several clamps of various sizes than to attempt to handle all plate thicknesses and weights with one grab. Well-rounded internal corners, preferably drilled, are a feature of the main body of the clamp. Stop plates prevent the load from reaching the rounded internal corners, which could be highly dangerous. A heavy, fine-threaded screw, preferably case-hardened. The overhang of the screw should be kept to a minimum. The clamp must be marked with its safe working load. A podger bar should be kept in a convenient position for instant use. Never use a long bar for tightening. Over-tightening is not only unnecessary, it will cause permanent damage to the clamp and render it dangerous. This is a cam-type plate lifting dog. It grips automatically and in proportion to the load lifted. The contact points must always be in good condition. For lifting greasy or hard steel plates. Remember that it is friction forces between the gripping surfaces that hold the plate in the air. Always stand in a position of safety, never under the load, just in case something does go wrong. Never lift higher than is necessary or over the heads of men. Most cam type dogs of this kind are only effective if used in one way. It is a good idea to mark the top side with the distinctive paint so that there will be no mistake. The crane sling should always pull across your plate. This will ensure that the clamp does not lose its grip. The safe working capacity must be marked on the clamp plate is on its flat with a firm level base above ground and well drained to minimize rust deterioration. Alternate plates should be staggered with dunnage at intervals to permit attaching lifting dogs without wedging the plates. When lifting plates stacked horizontally, select designed for the purpose. This is a cam type horizontal plate clamp. The line of action of the sling pull is inside the edge of the plate. This type of clamp grips and opens automatically. The heavier the load, the tighter the grip. Use the handle so that hands are not endangered. Small plates can be lifted using a single pair of clamps. 
Here is a thin, flexible plate being handled with the aid of a spreader beam and three pairs of clamps. This type of spreader beam should be used whenever possible for long, flexible plates or where extra capacity is required. Wire rope slings can be dangerous. When they are worn and frayed and their condition should be watched closely. This one is a mess. The foreman thinks so too. Just look at it. An invitation to disaster, isn't it? There's only one thing to do with it. Heave it over among the scrap. Whichever type of lifting gear you prefer, make sure that it has been designed for the job and that it is in good condition. Faulty gear is a menace to you and your workmates. Above all, don't lose your grip on safety. Lack of care could cost a human life.